Welcome back to Skies of War, and thank you for tuning in. Today, we're taking to the skies to explore one of the most extraordinary and ambitious aircraft ever built, the XB-70 Valkyrie. If you enjoy this journey through aviation history, don't forget to hit like, it really helps others discover our videos, and make sure to subscribe for more in-depth looks at the world's most iconic warplanes. Now, let's dive in. In the height of the Cold War, the world watched as two superpowers raced to dominate the skies, the seas, and the ultimate frontier of nuclear power. The United States, seeking a decisive edge over the Soviet Union, envisioned a bomber that could outfly every threat, penetrate the most sophisticated air defenses, and deliver nuclear payloads anywhere in the world. This was the era of ambition and innovation, when speed, altitude, and daring defined the future of warfare. From this vision emerged one of the most extraordinary aircraft ever conceived, the XB-70 Valkyrie. The XB-70 was not merely a bomber. It was a technological marvel, a symbol of human ingenuity, and a monument to Cold War ambition. Conceived by North American Aviation, the same company that had built the legendary P-51 Mustang and the F-86 Sabre, the Valkyrie represented a leap into uncharted territory. Its mission was simple in concept but extraordinary in execution, a strategic bomber capable of cruising at Mach 3, at altitudes above 70,000 feet, far beyond the reach of enemy fighters and anti-aircraft missiles. At the time, such a machine existed only in the imagination of engineers and visionaries. To understand the significance of the XB-70, it is essential to look at the evolution of strategic bombers. During World War II, aircraft like the B-17 Flying Fortress and B-29 Superfortress dominated the skies. They relied on high altitude, long range, and heavy bomb loads to carry out missions across enemy territory. These bombers were propeller-driven, relatively slow by modern standards, but they proved that air power could shape global conflicts. In the post-war era, the jet age transformed bomber design. Aircraft like the B-47 Stratajet and B-52 Stratofortress combined speed, altitude, and the emerging threat of nuclear weapons. Yet by the 1950s, the Soviet Union had developed interceptors and surface-to-air missiles, making even these jet bombers vulnerable. The United States needed a new class of aircraft, one that could fly faster, higher, and beyond the reach of existing air defenses. The XB-70 Valkyrie was born from this need. The design of the Valkyrie was unlike anything that had come before. At first glance, it appeared almost alien, with a massive delta wing stretching over 100 feet, a long, needle-like fuselage, and twin vertical stabilizers. Its six General Electric J93 turbojet engines were capable of producing enormous thrust, allowing the aircraft to sustain Mach 3 speeds at extreme altitude. But speed alone was not enough. Engineers had to solve the problem of airframe heating, as friction with the atmosphere at such velocities could cause metal to expand and weaken. To address this, the Valkyrie featured a titanium honeycomb structure and stainless steel panels that could withstand intense heat. Every detail, from the wing shape to the control surfaces, was meticulously calculated to balance stability, speed, and aerodynamic efficiency. One of the Valkyrie's most remarkable features was its folding wingtips. When cruising at supersonic speeds, the outer edges of the wings could be angled downward. This innovation reduced drag, increased lift, and improved stability. To pilots, it looked like the aircraft was transforming in flight, a testament to the genius of its designers. These features, combined with an extensive array of experimental systems, made the Valkyrie a platform for testing technologies that would influence aviation for decades. The first prototype took flight on September 21, 1964, piloted by Ul White, a veteran test pilot whose calm under pressure and extraordinary skill were essential to the success of the program. The flight was brief, but it marked the beginning of a new era. Subsequent flights pushed the boundaries further. The Valkyrie climbed to unprecedented altitudes, accelerated to Mach 3, and demonstrated handling characteristics never before achieved in a bomber. Pilots reported that at these speeds, the aircraft would glow from friction, 
creating an ethereal orange halo across the fuselage. Inside, instruments became nearly unreadable from the heat, and the sheer velocity created forces that tested human endurance as much as the aircraft itself. Despite its achievements, the Valkyrie faced significant challenges. The aircraft was incredibly expensive, with each prototype costing tens of millions of dollars in 1960s currency. Its maintenance requirements were extraordinary, demanding a level of support that even the most sophisticated air bases struggled to provide. Furthermore, the rapid evolution of missile technology threatened to render the high-altitude, high-speed bomber concept obsolete. The Soviet Union was developing interceptors and surface-to-air missiles capable of challenging even the Valkyrie's extreme envelope. The strategic landscape was changing faster than engineers could respond. Political considerations also played a decisive role in the fate of the XB-70. By the late 1960s, the United States had invested heavily in intercontinental ballistic missiles and low-level penetration bombers, such as the B-1 Lancer and upgraded B-52 Stratofortress. These systems were more cost-effective and capable of circumventing the growing threat of surface-to-air defenses. In this environment, the Valkyrie, despite its extraordinary capabilities, became a luxury the Air Force could no longer justify. Originally planned as a fleet of 30 aircraft, the program was cut to two prototypes for research and testing purposes. The XB-70 was also marked by triumph and tragedy. On June 8, 1966, during a formation flight at the Paris Air Show, the second prototype collided with an F-10 for Starfighter. The accident claimed the life of co-pilot Carl Cross and highlighted the risks inherent in testing cutting-edge aircraft. Despite this, the program continued, with the surviving aircraft completing extensive testing. The Valkyrie became a flying laboratory, gathering invaluable data on high-speed aerodynamics, materials, and avionics that would influence both military and civilian aircraft design. Historically, the XB-70 sits at a critical turning point in bomber development. It represents the pinnacle of the high-altitude, high-speed nuclear bomber philosophy. Whereas early strategic bombers like the B-29 and B-36 relied on altitude to evade defenses, and the B-52 combined jet speed with range and payload, the Valkyrie pushed the boundaries further than anyone had imagined. Its Mach 3 speed and operational ceiling were unmatched by any operational bomber of its time. Yet it also marked the end of an era. With the advent of intercontinental ballistic missiles, increasingly sophisticated surface-to-air missiles, and low-level penetration strategies, high-speed, high-altitude bombers were no longer the centerpiece of nuclear strategy. The XB-70 became a bridge between genera. The Valkyrie's legacy extends beyond the military sphere. Its delta-wing design and supersonic innovations influenced the development of both military and civilian aircraft. The B-1 Lancer, with its variable sweep wings and low-level capabilities, benefited indirectly from the lessons learned during the XB-70 program. Even the Concorde supersonic airliner drew insights from the Valkyrie's aerodynamics, thermal management, and materials, demonstrating that the Valkyrie's influence transcended its limited operational life. The Valkyrie was an engineering marvel, but it was also a symbol of a specific era. It represented the ambition, optimism, and audacity of the 1960s, when Cold War rivalry pushed nations to dream bigger than ever before. It was a Mokai designed to fly higher and faster than any other, a flying manifestation of human ingenuity and military necessity. Yet it was also a reminder that even the most extraordinary technologies can be overtaken by changing strategic realities. Today, the XB-70 Valkyrie survives as a piece of history. The two prototypes are preserved in museums, the most famous at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio. Visitors can walk beneath its massive delta wings, marvel at its sleek fuselage, and imagine what it would have been like to pilot a mock capable of cruising at Mach 3, thousands of feet above the Earth, with the power to strike anywhere in the world. It is both a monument to ambition and a cautionary tale of how rapidly technology and strategy can shift. The Valkyrie also serves as a reminder of the risks and rewards of pushing the boundaries of what is possible.
Test pilots risked their lives, engineers spent countless hours solving problems that had never been solved before, and the United States invested vast sums in a program that ultimately produced no operational aircraft. Yet the knowledge gained, the inspiration provided, and the technological innovations developed during the XB-70 program continue to influence aircraft design to this day. In many ways, the Valkyrie was a success story in failure, a plane whose legacy far exceeded its operational use. Some historians argue that the Valkyrie's true achievement was not its speed, altitude, or bomb load. Its greatest contribution was its ability to demonstrate what was possible. By challenging conventional wisdom and exploring the extremes of flight, the XB-70 set new standards for aeronautics, materials science, and pilot skill. It proved that humans could build machines that pushed beyond previous limitations, a lesson that resonates in modern aviation programs around the world. Looking back, the XB-70 Valkyrie remains a symbol of a unique period in aviation history. It was an aircraft born of necessity, ambition, and imagination. It was fast, dangerous, beautiful, and almost impossible to ignore. And although it never dropped a bomb in anger or served in combat, its legacy is undeniable. The lessons it taught, the innovations it inspired, and the dreams it embodied continue to resonate today. It stands as a reminder that progress often requires taking risks, embracing uncertainty, and daring to build something that has never existed before. The Valkyrie did NT change the course of a war, but it changed the course of aviation, forever setting the standard for what was possible in the skies above. Thanks for watching this deep dive into the incredible XB-70 Valkyrie. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit like, it helps others find our channel, and don't forget to subscribe for more stories about the world's most iconic warplanes. Until next time, keep looking to the skies.